it has begun. You know, we've long been saying with the advent of AI and robots and everything like that, what's going to happen to all of the jobs? You know, actually, I should say, check out my novel, my new novel, um, The Quantum Races, which is out now, because I do look at um, future scenario with AI. And one of the things that I did when I was researching that story, the book actually is 13 short stories that I've written over a course of nearly two decades. So most of the stories in there are quite old, um, that I've obviously I've rewritten them and I've tweaked them and I've updated them. But there's a few stories that I wrote from scratch. So I wrote some, there's a, I think two or three stories in there that are brand new. And obviously one of the stories, which actually is the last story in the book, is about AI. And in order to write that story, I was using ChatGTP to actually do the research for that story. And what I did is I asked ChatGTP um, to come up with two scenarios. So to look at how AI was being introduced into our, into our world now, AI and robotics, and what it was doing and how it was changing both um, you know, professional lives and leisure lives in society in general. And from that to extrapolate two scenarios, a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. I won't go into too much detail because obviously I want you to go and read the book. Um, but it did that. And, um, you know, and it was, it, they, were, they were pretty extreme. They were, I mean, it, 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 it goes from not quite, you know, uh, apocalyptic, but close to, um, wow, you know, let's all have that. Um, but here's the kicker. So I did all that. And then I asked it again to look at, I fed in a load of stuff. I mean, this is over the course of, you know, quite a, bit, quite a while I was back and forth with it. And I fed in a lot of like, this is what's happening, this is what's happening now, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, okay, so given everything that's happening right now, everything that's happening right now in the world and, and, and the way that we're adapting to it and the world we're doing and the way that things are going and the way the world order is right now, which one of these two scenarios do you think is most likely to happen in real life. And um, it came up with a with, with, with very, very high, strong possibility of the negative scenario to happen. Yeah, so that's AI telling us that AI is gonna screw us, thank you. Uh, unless, we, unless we use it right, unless, you know, and actually that's up to us, you know. Uh, but but the why I mentioned all of that before actually even getting into this story, which is from writers, is that it has begun because in China, you're already having a situation where you have uh, drivers there, taxi drivers, basically saying, they're taking our jobs. So forget about all of these people here in the UK going, oh, these foreigners coming over here, taking all our jobs. Oh, bloody hell, look at this. Um, you, don't have to, you won't have to worry about foreigners because soon it'll just be AI and robots. I'll tell you more right after this. A brown car guy. Right, so this story is from Wuhan. Where have you heard that name before? <laughs> Come on. Yeah? You remember Wuhan? Put it in the put it in the comments. I wonder how many. Come on. You must you must know uh, why that city is famous. This story is from Wuhan. Uh Liu Liu I can't pronounce Chinese names. I hope I do this correctly. Li Yi. Li Yi is uh, among China's 7 million ride-hailing drivers. He's a 36-year-old resident of that city and he started driving part-time this year when construction work slowed in the face of a nationwide glut of unsold apartments. Now, you know that in China, they've been on, you know, like at one point they said that the only country in the world that had more cranes than the UAE was China, <coughs> considerably more, because they were just on a massive, massive building thing. But of course, once you build everything, and once you build too much and you go, oh, okay, all these buildings are empty now, what do we do? Then obviously you have to lay off all the construction workers. So what are the construction workers doing? Well, they're turning to driving taxis. Um, so this is what this guy did. So now he predicts a crisis. This is what this guy said. He predicts a crisis. He stands next to his car watching neighbors ordering driverless taxis. Everyone will go hungry, is what he said uh, about these, these fellow drivers in, in Wuhan. Um, because of competition from robo-taxis from Apollo Go. Apollo Go, which is a subsidiary of technology giant Beidou. Now, I must just say before we get into this, that, <clears throat> excuse me, there, I maintain that there are no such things currently 
as fully autonomous, i.e. level 5 fully autonomous vehicles. However, having said that, there are vehicles in operation as taxis with a whole load of sensors on the top, on the sides, and what have you, what have you, um, that have been operating in America and obviously in China. And um, even in America, there have been some issues and, you know, there are some restrictions and stuff like that. I did do another video, um, you'll find it on my channel, where I talked about the fact that autonomous vehicles have been approved for operation in the UK in 2026. So even here, the law has been passed and the laws about, you know, who is responsible and how, to, how will it work and etc, etc. But there are quite strict laws. So, you know, the manufacturers of these vehicles have to meet those laws. In China, the laws aren't quite strict. So there has been a lot more of these cars that have been driving themselves around there. Um, and so these companies and these, you know, uh, ride hailing companies and taxi companies have been able to introduce them. So self-driving technology remains experimental, but China has moved aggressively to green light trials compared with the US, which is quick to launch investigations and suspend approvals after accidents. So as I was saying, this is continuing with the story from Reuters. At least 19 Chinese cities are running robo-taxis and robo-bus tests. 19 Chinese cities. Um, seven have approved tests without human driver monitors. So human driver monitors are basically like, so for example, in many countries, I think um, um, somebody sent me a video from Korea where they went out in a driverless bus, but a driverless bus actually still had a driver and also a technician as well to make sure all the systems were working. So they still had people in the car, in the vehicle to control it, even though it was kind of driving itself, but they were there just to take over and just to keep an eye on it and monitor it and make sure it was doing the right thing. <clears throat> but here, we're talking about seven of these cities have approved tests without human driver monitors um, by at least five industry leaders, Apollo Go, Pony.ai, We Ride, Auto X, and SAIC Motors. So those are names to watch out for. Apollo Go said in May that it planned to deploy 1,000 robo-taxis in Wuhan by the end of this year. In 2022, it had forecast it would be operating in 100 cities by 2030. Wowzers! Imagine that. Um, 1,000 taxis. Um, they expected the transition to autonomous transport in China to be gradual and well-regulated. That's what Polo Go said. Our robo-taxi fleet currently complements rather than replaces existing transport options, the company said. Well, not according to that um, Li Wei guy. Li, yeah, Li, Li Wei guy, yeah. <laughs> it, I hope I pronounced this name correctly. I'm probably not. Uh, it added that the rollout of autonomous taxis would also create jobs at Apollo Go in monitoring and testing and in analyzing the data gleaned from ongoing trials. Nah, I don't, nah, you know, I mean, I know many people do say that, that new technology comes along and it, 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 it creates more jobs. But I think in this particular case with uh, AI and ro robotic taxis, yes, there will be new types of jobs that will be created, you know, um, to make those things, to monitor those things, to fix those things. But I don't think that it will equate to the level of numbers that will lose their jobs. I don't think that that, I, personally, I just don't see that happening. I mean, you talk about the fact that you're putting out a thousand taxis, right? That's a thousand drivers that you've replaced. Now, you're not going to hire a thousand people just to monitor those thousand taxis. It'll be like five people you know, and an AI system. So, you know, at, at most, you know. So, I don't think that argument really flies. Uh, Pony.ai is backed by Japan's Toyota Motor Company, and it operates 300 robo-taxis and plans 1,000 more by 2026. And its vice president has said that robo-taxis could take five years to become sustainably profitable, at which point they will expand exponentially. So this is also interesting, that they're not actually profitable. I think there's more on that a bit later on. But they're not actually profitable, so why are you doing it? Hey, are you enjoying this video? Then make sure you hit the like button. It's very important. Plus, comment, share, and make sure you're subscribing. We Ride, which is known for autonomous taxis, vans, buses, and street sweepers, AutoX, backed by e-commerce leader Alibaba Group, uh, they operate in cities including Beijing and Shanghai. SIC has been operating robo-taxis since the end of 2021. We've seen an acceleration in China. There's certainly now a more rapid pace of permits being issued, said Boston Consulting Group Managing Director Augustus, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his surname. The U.S. has been a lot more gradual. 
Uh, Alphabet Waymo, which was formerly Google Car, Google Autonomous Car, um, that's the only US firm that's operating uh, uncrewed robo taxis in, that collect fares in America. The company has about 700 of those operating in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Austin, Texas. But not all of them are in service at all times. And from what I recall, there have been incidents with those vehicles. Um, there's another company, Cruise, that's backed by General Motors. That restarted testing in April um, uh, after one of its vehicles hit a pedestrian last year. So they had stopped until then. So there's a clear contrast between US and China with robo-taxi developers facing far more scrutiny and uh, hurdles in the US. Robo-taxis spark safety concerns in China too, but fleets proliferate as authorities approve testing to support economic goals. Last year, President Xi uh, Jinping called for new productive forces setting, all regional com uh, setting off regional competition. Beijing announced testing in limited areas in June um, and they would open roads citywide to self-driving taxis. Some Chinese firms have sought to test autonomous cars in the US, but the White House is set to ban vehicles for with China developed systems. Now already putting great tariffs on about 100% tariffs on Chinese imported EVs, for example, um, and mostly the EVs. So, if not all. So, uh, yeah, so then very unlikely to let that fly over there. Um, China has 7 million registered ride-hailing drivers versus 4.4 million uh, two years ago. So you can see the number of people that have now get, taken that job. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's a job that a lot of those people can move into. Ride-hailing is providing a last resort job to during an economic slowdown. As the side effects of robo-taxis could prompt the government to tap on the brakes, say economists. So they, what they're saying is that, well, you know, you have all these construction workers that have now the double number of ride-hailing or taxi drivers because they will move to driving that. And then if you introduce robo-taxis, you're going to take away their jobs and then that's going to slow down the economy. And so the government might be saying, whoa, 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 do we really need these? Um, uh, in July, discussion of job losses from robo-taxis soared to the top of social media searches with hashtags including our driverless cars stealing taxi drivers' livelihoods. And uh, another driver, Wang Guokwang, uh, 63, says it sees a threat to workers who can least afford this disruption. Ride hailing is, is work for the lowest class, he said, as he watched a polygon vehicle park in front of his taxis. If you kill off this industry, what is there left for them to do? So that's a very good point. Um, so this is so Apollo Go. Now this is back to what I was saying earlier about the fact that these companies claiming that they're losing money on these vehicles. So again, it's like you're losing money on these vehicles, yet you're doing them, and then you're causing other people to lose jobs, which means they're losing their livelihood, which means that all around you're losing money, they're losing their jobs. This can't be good for the economy right now, yeah. Anyway, Apollo Go loses almost eleven thousand dollars a car annually in Wuhan. Uh, Hayton International Securities estimated a lower cost model would enable uh, per vehicle annual profit of nearly $16,000. So they've estimated that if they go for a cheaper car that's, that is still driverless taxi, they could make $16,000 a year uh, profit. Um, by contrast, a ride hailing car earns about $15,000 total for the driver and the platform. Wow. So they don't earn a lot of money, these guys, anyway. Um, in the short run, there must be a balance between uh, balance in speed between the creation of new jobs and the destruction of old jobs, said Tang Wao, associate professor of applied economics at Peking University. We do not necessarily need to push at the fastest speed as we are already at the forefront. Whoa, China. <laughs> Look at us. Um, but, but anyway, but yeah, he's got a point there. The fact is that, you know, if you have that, um, if you're going to push ahead with these things before you actually need them, you're going to destroy existing jobs. You're just going to out unbalance the way these economies work. So that's, I mean, there's, there's not much more to that report. But, I mean, it's a very interesting point, And I think that it's something that we really need to look at. Just because we have the technology and the ability to do something doesn't necessarily mean that's the, A, the right thing to do. And even B, it's economically the best thing to do. So... Really, we need to sometimes, you know, in a rush to embrace technology, and believe me, I want to, because I want a Star Trek future as soon as I can, you know, and it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but, you know, hey, I'd love to see this stuff happening, you know. But even I would say no. I mean, we've got to think about people. We've got to find a way that we're going to transition to these technologies. If we're going to have autonomous vehicles here, then we've got to think about all of the people that rely on, those, on, on doing jobs as drivers, delivery drivers, taxi drivers, Uber drivers, whatever. And where are they going to go? What's going to happen to them?
I mean, you know, there's a lot to be said for the convenience for a lot of people of a car that drives itself, but is it right for everybody and is it right for the economy? And are we ready for them? Because this is the other thing. So really, I think this is a big discussion that needs to be had. Of course, it, you know, you know, it, 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 it flows over into the wider economic world. It's not just about cars and driving because AI and robotics is going to have an impact on everything, including me. Like right now, you can be assured that I am real and not an avatar, but you know, within a matter of months, I could do this as an avatar and you wouldn't, you know, I never need to be in front of a camera again. So you know, it, this is all perfectly possible. And then eventually that system would just, just replace me. You know, that is actually possible. So we have got to think about these things. We've got to be very careful about the future that we're heading into. And uh, for an insight into what, I, what, I, what could possibly happen, get my book. Catch you all in the next video. From the future's face 13 stories gonna take it out of space From Martian canyons deep to Dubai's high rise Secret lives, AI drives to the man who flies Pedal to the metal in a 325 Race through time, keeping hope alive AI takeovers, more lines than blur Get your engines ready, rev it up for sure Quantum races, lessons at the finish line Fast-paced fiction will blow your mind Tech and turmoil, survival's the grind Get lost in the pages, see what you find Past predators haunt, tomorrow's man leads Dystopian dreams where the future feeds From India to the Middle East Stories collide Uncharted roads in this epic ride Jump in the driver's seat, feel the thrill Spinning through the cosmos, using that chill Words without real secrets to unfold In quantum races, legends are told Quantum races, lessons at the finish line Fast-paced fiction, I blow your mind Tack and turmoil, survival's the cry Get lost in the pages, see what you find Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com.